Hi, my name is Pelele Kumete, aka LSV, and I'm a multidisciplinary designer and art director currently based in Durban, South Africa. I'm super excited to have partnered with Affinity for these creative sessions. Please feel free to leave a comment or ask any questions and I'll try to get to as many as possible. Before we get into it though, I just want to quickly take you through what my setup looks like. As you'll see, it's a very simple setup. A lot of my work begins its life on my uh, sketch pad. I then scan that onto Affinity Designer and then using my Wacom Intuos Pro, I uh, finish off the artwork. So here we are. We're going to be working in Affinity Designer today and I'll be taking you through how I create some of my uh, vector characters. And for the purpose of um, the session, I've already gone ahead and uh, quickly sketched out a rough illustration of um, what our character is going to look like. This is primarily going to be just a guideline of uh, main features, um, what I want to keep and uh, what I want to have. Again, you'll notice that because the character is uh, symmetrical, I have primarily just focused on the one side um, and uh, not so much on the right hand side. Um, because my plan is to kind of like work and get the detail working on the left hand side before I copy it over to the right hand side. I'll be taking you through some of the tools that I use to create some of my artworks as well as uh, some of my favorite features about Affinity Designer as well. So let's get right into it and uh, try to have some fun whilst we create this new artwork. As you'll see, I'll mostly be working under the designer persona, utilizing the pen tool to draw most of our character's features. Um, and I'll begin with the point right there on the chin and uh, extend that all the way to become our face. And just as a heads up, I will be speeding through some portions of this video in an effort to fit as much as possible without going too overboard with our time. Let's go. And what I want to do at this point is I just want to quickly um, increase the size of my stroke. I think something like a, like a two should be should be fine for now. I might change this later on, but um, we'll see how it goes. And I just want to quickly show you as well uh, one of my favorite features found under the stroke function, and that is the scale with object. Um, checkbox and this is a feature that I almost always uh, click on what it essentially does is it enables you to proportionately scale your object without really affecting um, the look and feel too much um, say for example should you wish to take this onto a bigger artboard or bigger canvas you know you almost uh, do that uh, without any trouble at all and I just want to make an adjustment on my curve um, you'll see that I'm consistently making these minor tweaks as I go rather than leaving them for last. I become a little bit fussy when it comes to these curves.
and I just want to turn my attention to her eye at this point and uh, utilizing our ellipse tool I want to draw a shape to use as our pupil and uh, I then want to go into the fill because essentially I don't need that right now um, I just want to go into our fill and uh, just turn that off um, for the moment I do want to then go into our stroke and uh, maybe increase the width a little bit just to make emphasis on that curve and I then want to go into our stroke color and change that to white what I want to do next is I want to grab our pupil and uh, essentially clip it to our eye curve such that it sits inside and you do that by just like dragging and dropping it into the curve you want to clip it with I then want to go into the actual eye curve and uh, just turn the color and use a black fill. And I want to use a black fill for our nostril as well as our um, eyebrow. You'll notice that uh, for the most part, at this stage anyway, I'll primarily work um, with either black or shades of gray and uh, I just want to at this point just focus on building the artwork without thinking too much about what colors I want to use and so forth. I just want to make a quick selection of um, my eyelashes just to make a few tweaks on the actual curves um, and how the stroke behaves and uh, I'll just utilize uh, my stroke pressure settings and uh, I'll pull on the, the right hand side how I like to think of this is um, the left hand point as the start of your curve and the right hand point um, the end of your curve and so I like to drag the second point um, which is on the right hand side and as soon as I do that you'll see how it immediately affects um, how my stroke behaves giving them an almost natural look in my opinion and what I want to do with it is that I want to almost save this um, as a profile and uh, almost creating a preset because I'll be using this more than more often during uh, the creation of this artwork so what I want to do is just save it as a profile that I can always go back to um, for other uh, curves that I want to make adjustments to I see I've missed a couple of them which isn't a train smash I'll just select those and because I've already got a preset or profile saved I can just uh, click on it and immediately apply that look onto them and the one below the eye I just want to treat that a little bit different what I essentially want to do with it is uh, I want it to start off thin um, and continuously get larger towards the middle and um, get thinner towards the end as well and you'll see that I um, just want to insert a point on my curve like right in the middle and raise it up and then grab the start point of my curve and uh, drag that all the way to the bottom and I uh, just want to make a tweak to our curve a little bit just raise it up just to make that middle area a little bit thicker and I want to save this as a profile as well because I'll be using it quite often um, in this process 
and I want to continue applying uh, some of these um, settings on uh, our other curves and uh, just continuously um, defining what our look and feel is going to be like. So here we are. I've gone ahead and duplicated our left hand side over to our right. You'll notice I didn't duplicate all of our shapes over from the left hand side because I just want to make the face uh, more interesting. I do have some other ideas for what I want to do on the right hand side, which you'll see as I go. Um, at this point, I do want to add some more detail on her hair just to make that a bit more interesting. And I do that by drawing a few more curves on and around her hair. And I think these help um, with the overall artwork at the end. So I've gone on to add a few more detail to our character's face and at this point I'm still working with um, our shades of grey. The big thing is just to get a feeling from our artwork and I do that through using our contrast and trying to see what works and what doesn't work. Um, and that'll naturally carry itself over when I eventually start applying um, colors to this artwork. But what I'm about to get on now is my absolute favorite features. Um, within Affinity Designer and that is um, the pixel persona which can be found right up here next to our designer persona and uh, what this lets you do is um, it enables kind of like an ability to work in both uh, vector and pixel workflows which is an absolute dream um, for me. Um, I want to get into this uh, persona and utilize our pixel tool to just draw a bit more detail just to add some uh, grunge and uh, additional other features to our character. So I've duplicated my artboard at this point and I've renamed the first to uh, something like monochromatic and uh, the second um, which is where I'll start applying the fun parts where we get a little bit more colorful with it and I just want to lock the first artboard so we don't interfere with that at all um, and to be honest with you I like to keep the monochromatic artboard um, just as a reference point that we can always uh, go back to um, once we start coloring and uh, figuring out um, what colors to use for our artwork. With me, you'll see it's a lot of going back and forth, uh, particularly when we get to this stage of our artwork. It's a lot of trying out things and it's also a lot of being okay with stuff not working out. And um, I just want to try out a little bit uh, of a different route um, altogether. I'm just doing this as I go, to be honest with you guys. I haven't really uh, predetermined what the final look will be. Um, for me, it's all about the feeling when it comes to these. It's honestly just always all about the feeling. And I just want to change some colors around just to see what else we can do to make it pop a little bit, just to bring the face out a bit more and uh, just changing some of these I think that's kind of working and uh, and it's a lot of this you'll see as we go that it's uh, it honestly is just a lot of this trying stuff out
and uh, just want to experiment with uh, some abstract shapes on the sweater. I'm trying to figure out what else we could do to make it a bit more visually interesting. So I'm just going to draw these, um, hoping it kind of works out. You know, just uh, again, just trying things out. I'm going to do something interesting with those colors. We'll see what we uh, eventually end up with. It's just a lot of um, experimentation and trying to make each of these as unique as possible. So here we are. Um, you'll see that I've gone on and uh, added some additional details to this artwork. I've added my uh, signature look and feel. I've brought in the eyes for that just to make the artwork a bit more visually intriguing. I've gone in on the face and uh, added some warm areas and just tried to to make the face as well a bit more detailed. Even though the look um, of this is uh, meant to be um, flat, there's still room to um, add those uh, tiny details just to bring the face out a little bit more. And uh, the big thing for me is always just to try and make an artwork that is uh, visually interesting to look at. Mm, that's always important to me. I've drawn two shapes um, as placeholders for our button badges. Um, I'm a little bit obsessed with those. So I think there's something interesting that we can do uh, in terms of accessorizing her sweater a little bit more. And I'm just going to get into uh, drawing that. There it is, uh, smiley face uh, button badge. Um, it came out pretty cool, I think. And um, the only thing now is that I just want to add a bit more detail to it, you know, which might not be really necessary for a lot of people. But um, I'll go into my effects, and this is one of those features that I always go to. Um, and I just want to select my gradient overlay. Um, and the upside to this is that I don't have to almost like duplicate the shape um, or layer that I want to apply it on. I can just uh, select it and uh, apply the gradient overlay on it. What I really want is um, the radial uh, type of gradient. And uh, the next thing is that I want to reverse so that uh, the highlight kind of sits somewhere in the middle. Um, and then I want to just uh, offset it along um, both the X and the Y axes and just kind of like refocus it so that it sits uh, and almost emulates and follows our shadow that is currently on her sweater. And uh, what I want to do is apply a multiply as well and then go into our gradient. And uh, in the black part of it, I just want to change that color something a little bit more interesting and you see we start to get some uh, very cool colors that orange uh, just bounces really nicely on there and just offsets that uh, yellow a little bit just to make it a bit more interesting and it gives it a bit more depth in my opinion which is always a nice thing and i just want to drop the opacity a little bit um, because 100 percent just feels a bit too harsh um, at least for me. So um, what you kind of want to do is uh, almost feel it and not necessarily see it, if that makes sense. 
Um, but uh, yeah, that's what I've done to just uh, just give it some uh, detail, subtle but uh, effective. And I just want to rotate the eyes a little bit as well. At this moment, um, I want to turn my attention over to our one love down here. And I um, just want to treat it a little bit different. Um, I want to go more of a designed um, route on this. I see uh, the wonderful people at Affinity have already created a heart for us on there. So I'll just grab that. Thanks, guys. And I just want to drag that as such. I think right there is cool. And I do want to change the fill to one of our darker colors. Um, and I'll just go into um, the rectangle tool and use those to create the rest of our letters. And I realize I've neglected um, my second button badge long enough. So at this point, I'll just turn my attention over to it. Um, I've been thinking of something interesting to put on there and I think I've figured it out. And there we are. I'm very excited about uh, how this artwork turned out. Um, I must be honest, I was extremely nervous um, right at the start when I began this. Um, but I'm super excited about uh, the final look of what we have. And at this point, I'll just continue to add a few uh, minor details here and there. Uh, maybe work on uh, the overall color and uh, how that works uh, all together in the final piece. Um, but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this session. And again, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out and I'll try to get to as many as possible. And thank you so much for watching. Special shout out to you and the team at Affinity. It's been a pleasure to share my process with you.